It's like, hey, you want to watch all of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air on DVD? No. Well, when you do, hit me up, dude. I got oh, all of the DVDs. Brother, oh my god. <laughs> it's like 27 discs. A lot of discs. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. You ever think about the fact when Will Smith passes away, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air is going to run endlessly on like Nick Nickelodeon, Nick at Night? It's true for everything. I mean, if, if Bill Cosby never did what he did, the Cosby show would be playing like that now. He'd just be like an old, pretty much dead guy. Just like how Betty White, you know, they were playing Golden Girls or whatever months before she died because it's just like... Oh, shit. I did not know that. show just goes forever. Everybody loves Raymond will be like that. Friends, Seinfeld. Every, when all these people die, it'll go on forever. Because, like, there's not going to be something that's better than Seinfeld or The Office. It, it, that is true. Seinfeld is the original sitcom. <clears throat> all sitcoms are based off of... Sure. Well, I, I mean, just also, I don't think anything is going to be better. Like, I, I think I think we're born at such an interesting time because we see, we saw the peak of, like, mainstream America or mainstream culture. Like, no one will ever be more popular than Drake. No movie will ever be more popular than The Avengers. No TV show will ever be bigger than Game of Thrones. I don't know, whatever the fuck, whatever the thing is. But... Because everything is so segmented, the internet has like segmented and bubbled everything. That there's no, mm. there's no, there's no one popular anymore. Like Dua Lipa is very popular, and I don't know any songs from her bes- besides the one with Young Thug. So like, but because my internet bubble is not Dua Lipa, my internet bubble is Young Thug. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so well, that's an interesting thought. I never really thought about that. So my, my point is that I don't think there will ever be another show that's like Seinfeld. I think from this point on, people will watch Seinfeld, and TBS will keep, continue to squeeze Seinfeld for the next hundred years until we're all dead. Whenever the sun's supposed to explode or whatever, Seinfeld will be on until that day. No, I think <clears throat> at a certain point, everybody who knows of Seinfeld is going to die. Yeah, but it keeps getting shared. Kids, like younger, new generations will learn about Seinfeld. The same way that you and I know about Rebel will have to cause James Dean, but that shit's old now. There's something else that kind of took its place, but we still know him and the whatever. Maybe that guy dies out because no one's playing that shit right now because we have Seinfeld. Nothing's going to top it or Christmas story. They're going to play that shit on, on Christmas. Uh, well, I guess you wouldn't know so much, but every year on TBS, they play it for 24 hours straight. TBS or TNT or whatever, or one of them or both of them or whatever. They play the movie 24 hours straight, starting Christmas Eve all the way to Christmas Day on repeat. Because it's such a classic. Or National Lampoon, Christmas Vacation, same kind of thing. Like We we saw all that stuff, and that's basically peak culture, I think. Peak popular culture. I think that maybe you're mistaking something, though, because it's popular right now because we're the target demographic. (laughs) I'm mentioning right all old shit. National Lampoon is 50 years old. Seinfeld's yeah, but, 30 years old. Yeah, but, like, we know about it, and, like, we probably, we like, we saw that when we were younger. Yeah. But now it's, like, I think I think for Zoomers, they probably won't. They probably won't really get into it. They'd be like, why would I get into it? I have this other thing I can get into. Sure, but I'm saying that there will be things that persist from this. Zoomers are all about vertical video on their phones, and it's shorter, quicker, whatever, memeier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But some stuff will persist in the same way that we still read like Pride and Prejudice in school. That shit's old as fuck. Shakespeare's old as fuck. But that's that's like what's culturally important enough to continue teaching to people who wouldn't care otherwise. And I think Seinfeld is on that level. Not to big up Seinfeld, not even that big of a Seinfeld fan. I just recognize it's that culturally significant, you know? Or like fucking yeah, yeah. 50 Cent, you know? That's my bias. He's the GOAT. But like 50 Cent's music is going to be, you know, that's what the point of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is. And, and Sonobi was just telling me I'm in this weird mental phase of, of like hoarding, like just trying to preserve things for the now and just trying to think about how important the now is in a changing world. I think because I'm just old. I don't know what the hell it is, but... I'm not old, but I'm getting older, and I recognize that. It's just a weird feeling. Anyway. Hey, you're not sleep at 11 old. You're 
No. <laughs> a treasure your memories old. <laughs> I'm buying bars of gold old. They fucking market to me on boomer ass Fox News, dude. It's like Jesus. hip replacement surgery and gold. <laughs> God. They got damn. me. Uh, but anyway, no, what I'm saying is, and I'm sure there will be a, a TikTok version of that. There, there, like the vines that you like, right? You just quoted a vine a few, like maybe an hour ago. Vine's been gone for years, but it's so it's made enough of a cultural impact for you to say that and like one to even expect that I even know what you're talking about. The same way that like how you doing maybe 20 years ago would have been a thing because of friends, but now that shit's dead. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't say that yeah. today, but but it still lasts. It's still preserved in some way in a way in a way that like another show might not have been from the same time. Hmm. Maybe I did. The funnier part about this is that when you did the how you doing thing, mm-hmm. I immediately knew it was Joey saying that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know why I knew it was Joey because I haven't seen friends in a very long time. But it's so in your head, especially as someone like your age, you know, we you and I are in that time where it's it, in our childhood. We heard it. It was it was everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I don't so know. I wonder what like, you know, my my kids will care about. So I wonder if they'll care that I have the land before time on DVD. And I'm like, hey, here's something that's important from my childhood. They're like, shut the fuck up, Dad. I'm watching this dude hit the woe or whatever. Whatever comes popular again on TikTok. <laughs> Hitting the woe is probably never going to be popular on TikTok. It's all cyclical, man. People are going to be cabbage uh, patching. Yeah, it, it's, people are cabbage patching? People are going to be. Mark my words. Oh, yeah. I don't think so. Because be cabbage me. patch is like a, a follow-up of the running man, isn't it? Yeah, but that shit becomes cool again. It's all just variations. There's only so many dances you can do. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I mean is that, like, it'll be similar. Maybe they'll do something similar to the woe, but it won't be the woe. Mm. Mm. It, 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 like, that, I learned this about fashion. It's like similar themes will come back, but they won't be exactly the same. Like, yeah. the Stan Smiths, like the white shoe, mm-hmm. got replaced by, like, the New Balance 850s or whatever. And it's, like, the exact same vibe but it's not the same shoe if that makes sense you mean the um fuck what's that brand i made leon dore whatever the Uh, hell yeah 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 yeah, yeah. were you watching the frugal aesthetic video about how those are basically the new stan smiths yeah yeah Yeah, i know yeah. yeah okay yeah 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 no that's the same vibe and and whatever but the stan smith originally came out 40 years ago or whatever and it was popular for a five-year stretch ten years ago. That's what I'm saying is, like, they were popular, and then they just became popular again. Even if you're mixing it with a different type of, like, jeans or whatever outfit you mix with it, the shoes are still the exact same shoes. Yeah. But... What? Yeah, but that's what I mean, is that, like, like right now, like, puffier, not puffier, but, like, more loose-fitting pants are in right now. But eventually, it'll be skinny-fitting pants again. Sure. There's only so many kinds of pants you can get, but that difference will be, like, those those new fits of pants will be, like, the important change. Sure. Okay. All I'm saying is, in 20 years, when there's a TikTok and, uh, or whatever trend, and uh, it's about a guy who gets really pissed off about really meaningless small things, and the whole theme of it is mostly about nothing going to be like oh wow Seinfeld did this back when people had attention spans of 30 minutes or more you know back when people would sit and watch commercials between episodes of a TV show on some boomer shit you know it has like a place in, in history it'll it'll be referenced but oh, it'll yeah. always be there yeah it'll be on TV tropes <laughs> <laughs> sure or if whatever TNT whatever version of television still exists in 20 years they'll be playing Seinfeld <sighs> yeah I, honestly, I think it'll be interesting when it shifts back from being short form content to long form content, where people are like hungry for like thirty minute videos. I actually saw a really interesting stat. It was like YouTube videos, longer YouTube videos, have been getting more like increasingly more views over the years. Mm-hmm. Like over these like recent recently, they've been getting like more and more views, like long form content. So. That change might be happening, but slowly. But TikTok is like massively popular and is like changing how people perceive reality. So, yeah, I don't know if I want to change how people perceive reality, but maybe we should do four hour podcasts because that's, that's the reason. We're bring back the four power, four hour podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that's I, I listen to longer videos too and during the day because yeah. I just want background noise. I don't want to keep looking for something to listen to or watch, and I don't want to listen to music because I don't want to hear new music. It takes too much attention, and then I don't want to hear old music because I'm sick of that shit. I'm old as hell. I signed up for XM radio, dude, like satellite radio. I had to call a human being on. Oh, no, no, no. I had to chat with a human being over the internet to sign up for my $5 a month satellite radio in my car. Oh, God. And I was thinking because I'm tired of my playlist. It's like 3,000 songs that I've had on repeat for the past 10 years. Uh. Tired of it. I don't want to, like I said, listen to new albums all the time because it takes a lot of mental effort to listen to new stuff. And I don't want to mm. skim it or whatever. So I just want kind of curated music while I'm driving that I don't need to think about. But I don't want the radio because the radio will play the same songs, three, four songs in an hour, over and over and over and over again. Uh-huh. Satellite radio kind of has that problem, but not so much. It's not so bad. It's a little less controlled, I think. And it's unedited. So I feel like a boomer. Just wanted you You're going to start that. listening to Howard Stern show, aren't you? No, they specifically asked me if I listen to Howard Stern, because it's a separate upgrade. I guess he's he like single-handedly carrying the whole fucking company over there, where he is the upgrade tier. Yeah. Uh, so I said, no, I don't think I even know what that man sounds like. But see, there you go. Culturally significant. We know who he is. I don't know dick about him, but I know who he is. And I'm sure that, that that information will kind of somehow get to my kids. Yeah, I mean, they probably will because he is culturally significant. He's like a big part of like the podcast revolution, actually. Yeah, all I know is he has like naked women on his thing or whatever, which we should try to look into for this podcast. <laughs> this fucking JavaScript nerd fest. <laughs> I feel like that's sending the wrong message for what developers are like. <laughs> All right, you want to start this thing? Uh, yeah, we can start this thing. Look at how white my arm is, dude. Out here looking like Mayo. Out here looking like Elmer from the Glue. This man's out here looking like that milk toast white devil. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's my rap album. When I'm done with all this podcast stuff, you know, yeah. milk toast white devil. And it's me. It's like juvenile 900 degrees or whatever the hell or 400 degrees. You're probably unfamiliar. It's like a shadowy version of me in the back. It's like an echoey version of me. But then it's like everything is on fire on the front of it. It's a crazy uh, energy of an album cover. That would be Milk Toast White Devil. Still working on my rap name. That's 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 a good idea for an album. I do still like the Yule Cowards Don't Smoke Crack or whatever <laughs> that album is. I, there's something about that name is just so good to me. Yeah. There's a, a guy on Twitter took that bot I made and he uh, it, it, he wrote a bot that will tweet every day a randomly generated Viper album name. Hey, yo, that's pretty dope. Yeah, it was, he contacted me on Reddit. I think I've mentioned this before, like maybe off the podcast, but he contacted me on Reddit. He's like, hey, where's that code from that Viper website that you had? Which was weird because it was two years or three years before that that I had posted the link to my Viper album name generator. So he asked for the code. I sent it to him. He made it into a, a Twitter bot. I follow him now. Did he credit you? Yeah, he did. On his GitHub, he's like, credit goes to whatever. Hey, Me. very cool, dude. It's, very nice. It's weird. GitHub, GitHub interactions feel weird. Because, um, you know, it's like it's like everything has its own purpose. Facebook is just like, I know you. Or Instagram is like, I know you. Hello, I will acknowledge that I know you. And I'll mm-hmm. follow you back or whatever. Twitter is like, you're funny. It's like, if you tweet something and people like it, yeah. like you're funny. True. GitHub, it's all what you do. No one gives a fuck about you. It's just what you put up. So it's kind of, it means more when someone cares at all about what you've done and it takes so much more time to put anything on github and like i could put up a cute selfie you know it takes me a minute you know killing them with the angles on any True. on any photo app or whatever but on github or to crank out an algo you know what i mean yeah <laughs> bust out a <laughs> bust, bust out, out a, a rhythm. viper album hell yeah dude <laughs> bust, bust out a rhythm 
<laughs> you know what's fucking crazy? Hmm. You following that is probably why, but I saw a Viper album title Twitter account, and I was like, that's funny. And then I just, I didn't follow it. I was like, that's funny, and moved on with my life. I would be surprised if there's more than one, so I imagine it was the same guy that used my thing that I was telling yeah. you. Yeah. Well, it's probably because you followed them, and you might have liked one of their tweets, mm-hmm. and that's why it showed up in my like Twitter timeline. I think it's at Viperbot. Maybe. Is the thing, yeah. Oh, man, Joseph's really double dip and now shouting out that at the top of this podcast. Have we started recording? Is this the opening? Yeah. Fuck it. All right. Well, I was thinking also, uh, I'm living as a free man. You know, it's been almost three weeks since the last episode. Also, hello, everybody. My name is Joseph. This is Yazid. This is episode hello. 111 of the Home Games Podcast. 112. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, 111 was the big boy episode of launch. I'm sure you're right, but that sounds crazy to me. How did I fuck this up? How do I continue to fuck this up every time? You're right. See, what's funny is that the joke is that I historically don't know what episode it is, but I'm a hundred. I'm a hundo. It's 112. (laughs) It's 112. You're correct. And today. So fucking good. Today's the 18th. Monday, July 18th, 2022. Oh, my God. Ask me another question. It could be anything. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what's uh what's the inside of a Kit Kat? Wafer. No, between that. Chocolate? No, nah, you're fucking up right now, dude. You're on a roll with the answers. They have a Kit Kat commercial out right now where someone asks, What's your favorite part of a Kit Kat? And the guy's like, Oh like what's on the inside? And the girl's like, The wafer? And he's like, No, in between the wafers. And it got me thinking, what the fuck is in between the wafers? And then they show you on the commercial very magnified, very close up, but there is some sort of brown goo keeping everything together. So, the more you know. I feel like I've actually fallen into a different timeline. What are you talking about? Are you telling me that a Kit Kat isn't just solid chocolate with wafer in the middle? See, so I also thought that, but this commercial, and we're also, they're winning, by the way. We're playing into their game. We're talking about their commercial on our huge platform. And and they they taught me that there is something in between there. It makes sense when you think about it. It's not just a brick of wafer covered in chocolate. There needs to be some sort of a thing in the middle to kind of break it up a little bit. And it is this unknown goo. That's wild. I will say, like, advertising has gotten so deep and permeating. I listened to, like, a D&D podcast, mm-hmm. and they were in, like, a magical tavern where they could ask for anything, and the food would be, like, magicked up for them. And so the guy asks for a mech rib. It's like a joke. <laughs> but then, like, later on, he's like, he asked for a mech rib again later on, but he's like, I'm not sponsored by McDonald's. Like, this is just a funny joke, but like the fact that like he had to put that disclaimer in there mm-hmm. is like how deep advertising has permeated our minds, yeah. our souls. <laughs> well, I think it's like the intention of uh, you have to have hashtag ad, or you have to have some sort of symbolizer that this is an advertisement when you post a social media ad. You can't Do just you? post. Are you legally required to? There's there's some sort of regulating body, I believe, that is supposed to enforce that. I don't know how how much they actually enforce it. But that's the intention, at least, is to kind of separate content from an advertisement. But mm, okay, okay. But yeah, it is it is weird. Like everything is just so whatever. And then just mentioning a brand or mentioning a name. For a time, I was just drinking San Pellegrinos or Budweisers on the podcast, and I was just like, should I mention that I just like these things? But then I don't want to be in a position where I'm. I've already said I like these things for free. What if we get like a million listeners? It's like, well, my opinion's worth money, motherfucker. You know, but not really. But you know what I mean? I don't know. It, I don't even think you're selling your opinion. You're just selling some product. Like, yeah. I watched. Uh, oh God, it was an interview with somebody who like his platform became quite big. And he was saying it went from like advertisers like telling him like, oh, I, you know, I, I love your your product and everything. Like, we'd love to be a partner with you. To like the advertisers would just be like, "Here's money. Talk about our product." Yeah. Like we'll we'll pay you this much to talk about our product. Yes or no? And like it stopped being like them even f- like fluffing up the like, mm, like hyping up his like ego. Mm-hmm. It was straight up just like I'm gonna pay you money to talk about our shit. 
Yeah. See, I, I don't know. I think I think that's a big thing of of uh, just to toot our own horn for a little bit. You know, we literally yeah. don't take any money for this. That's true. That there's zero pot- zero potential for any of that. I can say something that would get me fired. You know, like from my real job. You know, <laughs> there's no protection. We're just free balling out here. You know, that's what makes it so cool. This is dangerously true. I've never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Well. Yeah, I don't know. I just I think about it a lot, but but there's no there's no support here, whatever. But there's all just it's all just us. If uh, you know, if I stayed at a hotel, you know, at a at a Hilton resort, and I have a bad service, I'll get on my platform and I'll talk as much shit as I want to because I'm not sponsored by anybody. You know what I mean? Not like yeah, that's an example. I wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? But we're free to do whatever we want, make whatever mistakes we want. That's. That's true. We could get fired. Yeah. <laughs> live, live during recording. <laughs> just somehow, just get a call from my boss right now. Just like, yeah, shut the fuck up forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, Devastating. <laughs> but yeah, I guess I was gonna say before is that um, I don't really like the notes, whatever, for the podcast. It feels like a job. I don't really okay. fucking care. You know, I just want to talk about what we did this week or this past couple mm-hmm. weeks. Uh, just free ball it, you know. I just want to have fun with it. Just want to do this for fun because life is not fun. Um, so this should be, you know. Yeah, I respect it. What do you think I about that? This approach. I'll be honest. I turn my brain off from recording anyway, so. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm invested in the podcast, but in order to like deal with my own anxieties about being recorded, I just turn my brain off and let my mouth do all the talking. I would hope your mouth does all the talking. <laughs> you, you let your other parts go that one time. It didn't. It didn't turn out okay. Shit, live on air. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, anyway, basically, what I was gonna say is, uh, we took a little bit of a break, about three weeks. I don't know what you did, Yazid, for home game stuff, but for me, for home game stuff, uh, I added a little bit of stuff to the website, some diagrams and stuff in the developer section. I told myself and the website that I would add a developer quick start guide to make your own game. Uh, I couldn't do that until I had the ability to easily develop your own game in home games without having all of the code checked out and basically exactly my developer setup. If you're not me, how do you develop a game locally and test it and stuff? So... That wasn't super easy. I had to make that system work before I made a guide. And then I also did some work on a podcast API for our podcast. So you can download whatever episode, even when Yazid says the N-word and whatever crazy shit that he says. Um, <laughs> hey, man, you know you're wild N-word. motherfucker. Hey, man, I've this never guy's crazy. said the N-word. This guy's crazy. <laughs> Don't you get know. me fired. You know what you said, dude. <laughs> Uh, no, but, but whenever we go wild or whatever, say that, like, I don't know, YouTube removes an episode or whatever, an episode because we said that COVID was fake or whatever, whatever we said, you know, um, okay. <laughs> then, you're, uh, <laughs> you're really, you're really spitting the craziest stuff right now. It's not even a position either of us believe. <laughs> no, my point is we can say it and uh, I just want to have the API up so we can, so people can download our episodes directly from we're storing them on Amazon, so, you know, we still have that kind of problem, I guess. Where yeah, Amazon, Jeffy Beam. If we're at a point where Amazon was trying to hand delete our files from S3 because we said something so crazy, like, we're tapping into secrets of the universe that we shouldn't be knowing, so we should keep going, you know what I mean? But yeah, no, that's, that's basically what I did. I made the API, so the website will be able to fetch lists of episodes, and you can download episodes, uh, audio and video. I'm still uploading the files for that, but one, I have it set up so once I put them in S3, the service just finds them and makes them available. So, uh, yeah, basically just some light stuff like that. I've been playing some video games, I guess, trying to get some inspiration or whatever for creative stuff. Over the next five months or so, I'm going to be doing hopefully more creative stuff. I have some ideas for games and some ideas for... I have ideas for games and ideas for ideas for games, as in ideas that I think can make rapid fire game ideas for me and kind of make some interesting stuff from that. So uh, I guess it's kind of weirdly specific, but not at all specific, but uh, be on the lookout for more of that before the end of 2022. 
<laughs> or whatever. I also saw you went through and you closed uh, issues on GitHub. Oh, yeah. We should use GitHub issues. But the ones that we had up there were like three years old. And it was like, look into WebSockets or whatever the fuck. So they were all useless. And so I just deleted them all in a big batch. And then um, I think I made one more. And then I immediately associated it to a pull request. So my thinking would be, for every pull request, it should address an issue. Now that we have this kind of first official build out, there should mm -hmm. be tracked issues that we kind of are aware of and we, we manage more efficiently. So um, in a pull request, I would say this references this issue, this fixes this issue. Um, you know, for a lot of reasons that's beneficial, but I think another uh, a big thing is people coming onto the project at some point in the future, they can just see how it's progressed. And then if you want to learn about something, if I have a very clearly detailed hey, uh, players can join a game when the game has max players already, right? If a game says it can have four mm -hmm. players, mm -hmm. if it's already got four players, a player shouldn't be able to join that. But if you're, if you're just curious about how the system works and you want to see how that specific thing works, go to the issue, here's associated code changes. Well, wow, here's the part of the code that checks how many players can, can join. Here's, you know what I mean? You, like, it, it's more discoverable that, that way. I think that's probably the most valuable form of documentation rather than inline code commenting. Like if I just have a comment in my code and says, you know, this is a game, <laughs> like it doesn't fucking matter. But if I, if I actually have a system of kind of discoverable information that all links back into code, like reduce the barrier between the stuff and the code, I think that's probably the best way to do it. So that's another thing. I'm just kind of all over the place, just trying to think of ways to make all of this more approachable and engaging. Um, because I got some feedback from some friends. Uh, it's 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 funny. It's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the pretty girl, the pretty girl at prom or whatever. Where let's just say that you're a nerd and that you walk, hypothetically, of course, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. You walk up to the the group of kids in the hallway, and you want the pretty girl to notice you. But you do something dumb, you like throw a banana peel and you fucking woohoo, whatever. You want everybody to laugh, right? But you want the pretty girl to notice you. But you don't ever tell her that until you're after you're married, right? And then it's whatever. And then it'll be your little funny story. But basically, I put out the Instagram post like, hey, home games, first developer build. And two of my friends, Connor and Max, two of like my very smart people I really respect, right? I, I respect a lot of my friends, but two of my like top two. And, uh, -huh. uh they both sent me messages without me asking or whatever, basically just being like, hey, that's really cool. Kind of just general cool, right? Like general appraisal or general praise, that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. um, Max specifically asked about how games handle input. Like what if two players have make an input at the same time? How do you resolve that? And in my head, there's a fuzzy explanation, which is like, oh, there's a single threaded event loop. And so uh, things are coming through kind of sequentially and things are being handled sequentially. So your state might be out of sync, but your input will be sent correctly. But it, it's it's not approachable when I say that. So, so to him, once I start explaining anything technically, it's like, bro, I'm being polite. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so I need to make that discoverable for people who want to know it without boring them. Because it is very mm. boring, the, the way that you you have to explain something technically, it just isn't cool. <laughs> like it's just you know. Uh, so I think I think we should just work on ways to make it f more fun. I think there's potential here if it was just easier to get into. Yeah. Um, one thing we had talked about previously was like this idea of batching um, inputs too, which I think would even muddy the waters on that more. I don't see. Yeah I, yeah, I don't see a need to batch input because you would just be queuing it up, knowing that you have to send it off to the game. Like, it if 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 a player is playing a game, and they're making a controller motion or some sort of input, and then it they're they're not seeing it fast enough, and then we're like, oh yeah, we have logic that holds that on your side before we send it off at a, a point that we determine, like batching input. No, I thought what we had talked about previously was that the server would batch its outputs. So it would read in, it would wait like one sixtieth of a second and all of the like inputs that were queued up, it would process and send out basically. So that you'd still get 60 frames a second going out, but it would like batch inputs so that it would, it would like, it would hold a queue of inputs and consume from that queue. 
that was something we had talked about previously just to cut down the amount of like back and forth but mm. i don't know if we'd ever like gone anywhere with that conversation or not oh so within a certain time frame capture all inputs on the server and then play them in a sequence mm -hmm. against the thing yeah i still don't like that because the 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 game state can still change in that time frame so like it's it's like the update time versus the render time they're different so the game should still mm. be as fast as possible or i don't know requires thought i guess whatever but but yeah there's like technical complexity that there that, that could be interesting if you and i make it interesting it's kind of like um like i i gained so much respect and appreciation for a good teacher um like like teacher man uh the guy that taught us mm. web development in college yeah. um mark fisher he was very good because he made everything very approachable, very regular sounding. He didn't seem like a total fucking tech asshole when he complained when uh, when he explained stuff. Um, very approachable. Everything he was saying was very approachable. But but he had to so thoroughly understand everything, all of the big words and the fancy words and all of the like, hoo hoo people when they talk about stuff like what they're saying, to to understand it so well to then make it understandable. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm -hmm. Where it's like I'm not there yet. I can't. I can't take all this stuff that I'm still so close to that I know so well, and process it into a sentence that is clean and approachable to a human person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that is true. It's like that. There is that like idea of like if you understand something enough, you should be able to explain it to like a three year old or something. Yeah. But that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> three year olds are dumb. <laughs> totally. But I mean, yeah, I mean, in a, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, someone who doesn't know programming can make a game and learn something from this. So how do you make someone like that feel confident enough to get into it? And I think something as simple as having a modifiable word list, like, like if, if you download Doom and there's a file in the root folder that you can access and it's just the string map or whatever. So it's like you can see every string used and replace it. So you can replace the word player with butt cheeks. If you can, if you can do that and just know that if I modify this text, the, the, the thing changes in the computer. And like mm -hmm. if you get that little thing going and they dig more and they dig more, then you eventually, like if we, have, if we have something there for them to keep digging into from the... I played this at my friend's house. He's like a tech weirdo, but I'm kind of interested to like, oh shit, now I'm a tech weirdo. You know, if we can make more of them, you know, that'd be good. Uh, and I just think, I just think we should, we should build the system that like, we should build the rabbit hole that you can get into, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. I think like two would be like colors and um, the text. Like mm -hmm. those are the two easiest things to start people off on. The colors would be interesting too, because then they would need to understand like arrays like how computers render RGBA stuff. Yeah, and that's per, that's pretty basic surface level stuff. I mean, someone just poking around can 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 change that comfortably, I think. And um, you know, it's like you and I have talked about it, just having the confidence that it'll probably be fine. Like nothing will really blow up. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> I guess that's pretty much all I did is I, I made the podcast service. I'm still working on some website changes. I'm going to do the developer guide, like I said. Um, oh, yeah, like I said before, I added a change to home games where you can have a new directory that will just assume that there are games in it. And if you have games in it, it'll just include them on the dashboard. So if you have a collection of local games that you're just testing, you would use that directory for it. I also have another configuration thing. It's called Start Path or something like that. Or basically, instead of instead of starting up the dashboard on startup, it'll start a particular game file. So if you're developing mm -hmm. a game locally, you don't want to be restarting the server, going back to the dashboard, finding your game, clicking your game, clicking start, and then playing. You would rather just be able to restart it and see your game. So just some really simple changes I made there. It took me like an hour in total, I guess, to actually do, which is not that bad. Um, yeah, pretty minor stuff. Continuing to vibe. Oh, like I said, play video games. Uh, but none of them were that cool to me. So I guess I had nothing to really talk about there, unfortunately. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Right on. I think that by next episode, I want to do an update of Square. Okay. I've been thinking about it a lot because I, um, 
I like looked how square runs, and I think it looks bad. So I want to redo square. So I want to do a V2 of square by next episode. Sure. So that's my, I'm setting that goal. I'm going to open an issue for it. I'm going to give myself a time frame for it and assign it to myself. Real professional shit. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you can use either home games or home games core for the issue. I haven't decided which one I, I like more because home games is just basically a pointer to home games core and home games web. It's not really, there's nothing really in there. But it is the main repo that people actually check out and run um, if they're running it from source. So, anyway, I guess... The games are stored in... Core. Core. So I should probably open an issue in core. Yeah. I think. That makes sense. Because that's where I'm making the update for. So... Yeah. I don't know. I think that's where I would make that issue. I was going to ask you, actually, about PR templates then. Mm. Do you want a PR template that's like, give us an issue, like, link your issue to this PR? Like, basically requiring that you have an issue that you're trying to so we don't just get random-ass PRs? No, I mean, if we ever if, if we run into that problem, we can do that, but it sounds like too much process for right now. Okay, makes yeah. sense. If you have an issue, just link it in the thing. It should be fine, as long as we can track it. Would we... If somebody else made a PR, would we demand they open an issue? Uh, if somebody else made a PR, at this point, we would talk to them, be like, who the fuck are you? Why are you doing this? Are you sure? <laughs> you want to be on the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you want to run the podcast? I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So we'll run. We'll, we'll cross that bridge, I guess, when we get to it. If we have that problem, we'll figure it out. I don't. Basically, it's like this first official build stuff is basically, hey, developer friends and anybody curious, this is a functional MVP of this idea. Um, you can poke at it, it'll probably break, but it's official in the sense that it works and we say that it works and we want you to try it out if you want to. Mm-hmm. But in the same way that like, like, you know, it needs to be approachable, like I'm saying. So we need, we need, um, something that people can enjoy without thinking of the system. Like, mm. um, you know, like every time I see something working, I see the system and how it's working. I think I mentioned that last time where it's like I see the seams, I see the gaps. But it, um, when I see a, a, like if I see an animation of a guy walking, I think, what is the thing timing this animation and keeping it in sync with the game? And what is the thing keeping it in sync with itself? Like how is it, how is it not overlapping itself with whatever animation frame it's in right now? Um, and, and if I can look at that and not think about those things and just see, like, a video game that I'm not thinking about, then it's like, okay, then we have things here that are approachable and cool and fun and nice and whatever. So I can show this to you and show this to my friends and have our Christmas party and our New Year's party, and it won't be this, like, weird thing. It'll be, hey, guys, go to this website. We can play a game. Not... Hey guys, I made this thing, and um, it's uh, JavaScript, and um, it's running on the LAN. It's a local area network, and uh, I have two routers in my room, and uh, <laughs> it's like I, I don't need to do all that, you know. Why did you be become a, a gremlin? <laughs> yeah, the JavaScript gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> JS Gremlin's a cool blog. I would I would run that blog. JS Gremlin dot net. Uh, you know what? I'm kind of into it. I actually really like that a lot. I'm kind of into it. I keep paying I think for... Well, go ahead. Gremlins needs to make a comeback in the tech space, for sure. Gremlin? Like the, the the 1980s movie or the concept of a gremlin? The concept of a gremlin in the tech world is what I'm saying. Like, you're like a JavaScript gremlin mm. when you talk about home games like that. You're like mm. a home games gremlin or like oh. a Java gremlin. That could be our mascot. We're, we're weak in the marketing game, dude. We need a, <laughs> we need a mascot, the home games gremlin. It'd be like the Noid from Domino's little like red guy who steals pizzas or some shit all right joseph's on one right now what are you talking about <laughs> look up the noid look up avoid the noid there's a whole video game about it angry video game nerd covered it uh but yeah no anyway i guess that's basically all i worked on i will continue to work on games i will continue to work on the stuff that's on the roadmap that I'm not really remembering right now, but games was on there, creative stuff, making all the stuff better, the system better, and documentation. That continues to be my focus. Uh, yeah. Chilling. Cruising. Vibing. 
Right on. Yeah. Do you feel do you feel less pressure to work on home games? Or is that still a thing? I feel like a soul without a goal. Okay. You know? It's a it's a man without a plan. Is this is this your rebel without a plan thing? No. What rebel, you rebel without rebel a cause? What is it? Rebel with a rebel with a cause. Yeah, rebel without a cause. Yeah. What is it? Like James Dean. James. Yeah. Not the porn star. The real actor. I'm too deep into this Wikipedia now of ad content monsters. I right, get me out of here. <laughs> Basically, Sorry. home games will continue to be a thing that I work on. Mm-hmm. I have no... Uh, yeah, like, like I said, I don't really have any deadlines or whatever. It's just I want to make everything approachable and cool, and at a certain point, I'll probably give up. So um, I'll keep doing this until I do that, and that'll be that. Hell yeah, brother. I'll be, I'll be here supporting you as best I can. Sounds good. Wikipedia-ing mascots. I... <laughs> You told me to look up Avoid the Noid, and then I, but you described him as a, a, a red dot. And I was like, that's not for Domino's for sure. That's like a soda. It's like I knew a 7 Up. He's, a, it's red, cool he's a red guy. He's a red man. He's not a red dot. He's a dot. red rabbit man. Yeah, he's like a long boy. He's red. He is a long boy, and he showed up to freeze pizzas, but for some reason the Domino's pizza box didn't freeze. It's a weird quirk about the backstory of the noid that's what he does in the 1988 commercial (laughs) all right well (laughs) you continue researching the noid but as far as i know that is the end of the podcast uh of things we have to talk about so podcast api stuff coming soon we will have podcasts listed on the website for you to download all of our hot spicy content also in raw form, like before it's processed and stuff. Some of the MP3s I don't have anymore, so I had to download them and then re-upload them, so the bit rate's a little bit lower. But I do have original raw audio for pretty much every episode we have. So if there is a demand for it and someone's like, hey man, episode four sounds like shit, uh, we'll do a remastered run, probably put them on Blu-ray or something and sell them for like $100, really squeeze the fans that want that. Um, but basically, How many episodes did The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air have? I don't know, but it's like nine seasons. We gotta get to that. We gotta get to that number. Well, we can say that a season's ten episodes and call this whole thing a day. But um, we could talk about that at some other point. But basically, I'm giving this six months. <laughs> if, and if and if no one makes a fucking game in six months, I am drastically slowing down, dude. I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start getting into horses or something like i'm gonna find another weird expensive time consuming and regrettable hobby that's gonna do it for us thank you everybody for listening <laughs> as always our music was done by our friend tynan he is nitan on Bandcamp. that is nitan n-y-t-a-n you can find us on twitter at home games io we also have a website, homegames.io, with a contact form at the bottom of the page you can use to send us a message, feedback, uh, questions, concerns, whatever you like. We also have builds available for you to download. We didn't talk about that much, but yeah, you can go download Home Games, play it, check it out, see what's up, uh, give us feedback, all that. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.